What do you deserve? It's easy to expect certain things, to think that you've earned some rights. Maybe you think you deserve to play your game with no interruptions, or to stay at the front of the line since you got there first. Maybe you think you deserve to eat food you really like at dinner every day, or to get brand new shoes every time your old ones get a little worn. <laughs> Maybe you even think that since you're older, you deserve to go to bed late. <laughs> After all, every single ad you see on a screen or billboard or magazine screams, you deserve it. But when Jesus walked this earth, he showed us a different way. Over and over, Jesus laid down what he wanted for the sake of someone else. His time, his energy, his life. Every day, we have amazing opportunities to follow Jesus by putting others first. You can show your little sister she's important by setting aside your game to help her practice reading. You can put another kid first by letting them go ahead of you in line. You can put your mom first by not grumbling when she serves her favorite meal. And you could keep wearing your old shoes and give the money to a place that provides clothes for kids in need. And you can put your whole family first by going to bed on time so that you're not super grouchy in the morning. Jesus lived out every moment of his life putting others first. His love for us goes on and never ends. So you can say thank you to God by giving up what you think you deserve. When you put others first that way, others can see God at work in you. That's why humility is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. by you forever I'm your friend you'll always be right here with me I'm so thankful for your love no matter what I do I know this is true you're by my side you'll never leave I want to thank you God for showing me who I am you're so good you help me to understand
There you go. Thank you. Hey, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about humility while we take a look at the story of someone really important who took on the job of a servant. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about humility. Which is putting others first by giving up what you think you deserve. I think you should go first and tell everyone what we're doing today. Oh, I couldn't possibly. You first. No, you. No, you. 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 This is ridiculous. Agreed. So you want to tell everyone what we're doing? Well, there's an amazing celebration coming up next week. Spoiler alert, Easter. And one of the traditional ways to celebrate new life at Easter is by decorating these tasty semi-orbs. Today, we're going to get creative. We've each found a new way to decorate eggs. And you can decide what you like best. You may go first. Thank you, but your way has to drive first. So you first. Oh, it's fine. Did you just win at being humble? <sighs> Let's make, make it. it. I'm using shaving cream. Step one, fill a baking sheet with shaving cream and smooth it out. Step two, drip food coloring all over the cream. Lots of food coloring. Then swirl it around with a toothpick. Step three is the really fun part. You're gonna need gloves for this. Take a hard boiled egg and roll it all around in the shaving cream. Make sure they're completely covered. When you're done, let them dry for 20 minutes and you can do a bunch of different colors. Voila! Okay, so those may turn out kind of cool, but while they dry, let's try my way. Okay, step one is super simple. Just dye your eggs a solid color in the regular way, using hot water, food color, and vinegar. Now we get to the fun part. Step two, fill a small bowl or container with an inch of fresh water. Now, choose the color that you want to marbleize your egg with. It should be darker than the color of the solid egg, so use a lot of food color. Step three, add one tablespoon of olive oil and stir it gently to create swirls and bubbles. Step four, take the solid color egg and place it in the oily water. Roll it around with a spoon and hold it in place for a few seconds here and there to absorb more color. The longer you roll your egg around, the more marbled it will be. You know what, now I wanna take them out and kinda of just mix up the colors and just try to see where that goes. Eggs are gonna look very good. Mine are gonna look better. Are they dry? I think so. You want some help? Sure. It's like an archaeological dig. What lies beneath? Ooh. <laughs> that is pretty. Look at this. Your eggs are very marbly. And your eggs are very swirly. What do we do with them now? They're just for decoration. Maybe an egg throwing contest? Or not. It's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in John, the fourth book in the New Testament. But before John, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. 
When Jesus grew up, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. At last, he made his way toward Jerusalem for the Passover feast. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone, I'm Brian. Jesus was about to head into Jerusalem where great crowds were gathered for the Passover feast. He asked two of his disciples to bring him a donkey and her colt. They placed their coats across the colt to make a comfortable seat for him. Now, Bethany, where Jesus was staying, was only a short distance from Jerusalem. Jesus had walked hundreds of miles on foot, so why did he need a donkey for a measly two miles? Well, great kings often rode victoriously on a powerful war horse. But Jesus knew what the prophet Zechariah had written long ago. Say to the city of Zion, see, your king comes to you. He is gentle and riding on a donkey. He is riding on a donkey's colt. Jesus was showing that he was a different kind of king, a king who came to serve rather than to order people around. As the people saw him coming, they laid their coats on the ground and cut branches from palm trees. They called out, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna! Hosanna! News about Jesus and the amazing things he had done spread all through the city of Jerusalem. But the religious leaders had been looking for a way to get rid of him and saw their chance. Jesus knew the plans of the religious leaders. He knew the time had come for him to give up his life. But first, he had a special message for his closest friends. As they ate the Passover meal together, Jesus stood up. He took off his outer robe and wrapped a towel around his waist. Then he poured water into a bowl and knelt down to wash his disciples' feet. The disciples must have been surprised, to say the least. Washing feet was a dirty job saved for the lowliest servant. Yet Jesus, who had just been hailed as a king, was washing their feet. When Jesus reached Peter, though, Peter put up a protest. Lord, are you going to wash my feet? You don't realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. When Jesus finished washing their feet, he put on his outer robe and took his seat again. I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet so you also should wash one another's feet. I have given you an example. You should do as I have done for you. Now you know these things, so you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus, God's very own son, chose to take on the role of a humble servant, and he asked his followers to do the same. The end. Honestly, the washing feet part kind of weirds me out. Yeah, it does seem kind of odd to us now, but with walking dusty, dirty roads, washing feet when you arrived at somebody's home was super important. Yeah, but Jesus didn't actually mean for us to go around taking off people's shoes and washing their feet, right? Well, that's just one way Jesus put others first. The important thing Jesus wanted us to hear is that we can set aside our own wants and needs to show love to others. So, what's our part in the story? Well, maybe it's your brother's turn to unload the dishwasher, but you choose to do it for him. Or you can tell your teacher is feeling really overwhelmed, so you use your free time to help clean up the classroom. Last week I got this brand new game I was super excited to play, but then my dad got home with a giant load of mulch to spread on the flower beds, so I put off playing my game to help him. Yeah. See, if you keep your eyes open, there are opportunities all throughout your day to put others first. And you don't actually have to wash their feet to do it. That's good, right? I'll see you next time. Here's the thing, Jesus put others first. So what are we gonna do with these? Well, my aunt is Greek, and they do this thing where they hold the egg like this. You do one too. Oh, uh, okay. Then you say, Christos Anesti. What's that? It means Christ is risen, and then you tap the eggs together. The egg that doesn't crack wins. Let's do it. Christos Anesti. Ooh. I win. Mm. The egg just cracked. My turn. All right, ready? Whoa, 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 whoa! Tap, not smash. Oh, oh. Yeah, uh, sorry, uh, can we try again? Sure. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See, See you, you next time. time. All right, ready? Ready, ready. Ugh.